Hello and welcome to our presentation on the Health Sciences Career Pathway. Today's presenters will include Elaine Vincent, David Kaysen, and Taylor Williams. According to the Clinical Biochemist Review, in a retrospective review of 14,000 in-hospital deaths, communication errors were found to be the leading cause, twice as frequent as errors due to inadequate clinical skill. This quote expresses just how important communication is in the health science workplace. If the leading cause of death is breakdown in communication as opposed to inadequate skill, then you see just how important this communication is. In the career pathway of health sciences, we have determined three lucrative careers which include diagnostic medical sonography, nurse midwifery, and registered nursing. Without the talents and expertise of those working in these fields, we would not have effective cohesion of care in the field of health science. Patients would not receive the care that they need and would be forced to figure out their health care needs on their own. Key areas required for success in diagnostic medical sonography, nurse midwifery, and registered nursing include direct communication, written communication, delivering bad news to patients, active listening, leadership skills, nonverbal communication, educating patients, personal relationships, verbal communication, and again, nonverbal and written communication. We will now discuss these areas further. The purpose or goal of diagnostic medical sonographers is to perform ultrasound procedures and record physiologic and anatomic information for delivery to the physician. Responsibilities for diagnostic medical sonographers include using specialized equipment to generate images used for assessing and diagnosing various medical conditions. To discuss my personal experience or interests, I will cover my work experience and personal interest or passion. I, as of now, have no work experience in the field of diagnostic medical sonography, but I have, however, spent time reading textbooks and online articles on the subject and feel it is a perfect position for me to fill in the future. My personal interest stems from my love of anatomy and physiology, and in this field, I'll have the opportunity to view these topics and compose relevant information for diagnosis and treatment. The first skill I would like to discuss in relation to diagnostic medical sonography is direct communication with patients and doctors. Direct communication with patients and doctors is a vital aspect of practicing as a sonographer. The professional role of the sonographer is unique in its requirement for direct communication with the patient during an investigation. The second skill I would like to discuss in diagnostic medical sonography is written communication. Written communication is vital in the work as a sonographer. It is primarily used to communicate the results to be viewed again at a later date by a physician or other healthcare practitioner. The third skill in diagnostic medical sonography I'd like to address is delivering bad news to patients. Delivering bad news is a common aspect to consider in the work as a sonographer. Communicating bad news is a complex skill and requires an adequate training to empower the sonographer and offer better patient care. I would like to discuss two scenarios that can arise in work as a diagnostic medical sonographer. First, the sonographer is responsible for direct communication with patients and physicians. As the sonographer scans, they interact with the patient and communicate the findings to the physician. Secondly, the sonographer is responsible for documenting the encounters. This documentation allows patients and practitioners to access the information after the fact. I would now like to discuss two case studies that can arise in work as a diagnostic medical sonographer. Firstly, breaking bad news to patients is an increasingly common challenge. It has been found that the use of communication training proved beneficial in improving the sonographer's skill. Secondly, sonographers must find a way to communicate positively with difficult patients. It has been shown that coursework and clinical training in this area improves this skill dramatically. Next up, we will hear about nurse midwifery from Taylor Williams. 
Hello, I'm Taylor Williams, and the career that I chose for my career pathways project was nurse midwifery. The nurse midwifery works directly under the primary nurse to ensure that the baby and the mom are okay during childbirth. Childbirth is can be a very scary process, but if you have the right doctors who listen to you, who have great communication skills, it can help. So the nurse midwifery's job is to have everything prepared. So as soon as the baby's born, they get them cleaned up, do everything that they need to do with the baby so they are back with the mom. They're responsible for having and taking screenings for the mom as she prepares for childbirth. Usually moms have to have several screenings such as HIV, STIs, hepatitis B and C, and many others, especially tuberculosis because that can really affect the child. I don't have any work experience with nurse midwifery whatsoever. I wanted to do internships in the beginning of 2020 because I thought it would be a great way to see if I was really passionate about it because a lot of people go into a job, are passionate about it, but they never have any work experience in that field. So when they go into the field and they're not happy, they don't know what to do. So it's very important for me to make sure that I would be happy with this career pathway, but I have no work experience, but I really hope to get some. I have a personal interest in it though, because I think it's amazing that someone's helping to bring a life into this world safely and helping people be happy with their baby. I, I think it's amazing. You're making the mom feel good. You're seeing a new person being brought into this world. I just feel like what's not to love about it. For nurse midwifery, the three communication skills that I chose were active listening, leadership skills, and nonverbal communication. I feel like those are core communication skills that you need to execute this job properly. But in the following slides coming up, I will sh go more in depth and talk to you guys more about what it means for each communication skills. With nurse midwifery, active listening skills are so important because every year, unfortunately, mothers have fatalities because they weren't being listened to. They're telling the doctors, they're telling the nurses that they're feeling some type of way, but the doctors and nurses aren't listening to them because they might think that they know it all since they see this type of thing every day, but listening to someone is so important. During this project, I researched a lot about mothers with hearing impairments and speech impairments and how important it is to for doctors to take the extra mile to actually listen to them, communicate with them on a personal level and not make them feel out of place because of the impairments that they have. It's very important that they take into consideration with each patient and treat everyone differently since not everyone's going through the same thing. For a smooth birth experience, it's very important that everyone knows their place, where to stay, when everything is happening, but at the same time, it is birth. Things change, plans change, and things can get crazy. So if the primary midwife is busy, if she's preoccupied with the mother doing something, it's a nurse midwifery's job to step up to the plate and help whoever needs help and take leadership in that because you're working directly under a midwife. You're her right-hand man. So it's very important to step up, help people if they don't know what they're doing because birth, pregnancy, everything like that can be really tricky. So you have to make sure everything's smooth sailing. Nonverbal communication is also essential with nurse midwifery. The mother is nervous and she's scared about what's about to come. Especially if it's her first child, she's going through birth and labor. She doesn't have, she's uncomfortable. Probably her, for the first case study for the nurse midwifery, we have a mother who wasn't feeling well, so she went to the hospital. She had a 100.5 fever and a sore throat. They called her morbidly obese. So when she went in and they took the fetal heart rate, they noticed it was a complication, but they blamed it on her weight, even though she was telling them that she still wasn't feeling well while she was 41 weeks pregnant. 
So after being there at the hospital now, she was there for 41 hours and they still hadn't diagnosed her. They kept on saying that the fetal heart rate was because of her weight and she wasn't feeling well because she was still pregnant, but she was telling them that she wasn't feeling well while they weren't listening. After being admitted to the hospital for 41 hours now, while she was 41 weeks pregnant, they finally diagnosed her with chorioamnionitis, which is when the membrane has bacteria in it and it's very unsafe for the baby because it happens during or before labor. So the baby ended up passing because it was in their distress for so long and the heart rate wasn't well, like what they told her before, but they dismissed it. And she had to still push out her baby and the baby shortly passed after it was born because they didn't listen to her. So it's very important that with situations like these, mothers are heard and they're listening because something that was so easily fixed by bacteria, because once they put her on antibiotics, it started to get better, but it was so late because they waited such a long time to diagnose her. The mother went on to sue the doctors and the nurses and actually won her case. In the next nurse midwifery case study, it was the mom who had this time two twin boys and she was scheduled to be induced but with a vaginal birth and she went to the hospital and they had planned everything and everything was supposed to go a certain way. One of the boys came out and he was fine but when it was time to take out the other boy, it was complications. In the end, he had the umbilical cord wrapped around him and there was no ultrasound machine in the room to see what was happening. So they only could take the fetal heart rate of the baby. But if they scheduled something like this and they knew that the baby two twin boys and there's always more a higher risk with dealing with two babies they should have had an ultrasound system in the room while this was happening and but they didn't she had a very healthy pregnancy the only thing that happened was one of the babies were breached which i'm assuming that that was the child that was stuck in there and the umbilical cord got wrapped around the baby so they had to rush her to do a cesarean with the c-section and by the time they took out the baby, the umbilical cord was wrapped around him for too long because they didn't take leadership, they didn't take ownership, and they didn't move quicker as they were supposed to. And he was born blind, and he actually passed away five months after she gave birth. After everything happened, she went to court and she sued them as well, and she won her case. When a mother gives birth and the baby is ready to be cleaned up, if someone's tending to the baby, you can, you know, be a leader and tend to the mom, see if she needs anything, what she's going through. That can be one scenario. Another scenario could be if you're doing screenings from, for the mom to prepare for labor and she's complaining of pain, you can call another nurse over or someone to give her a sonogram to see what's happening and try to fix her problems. But nurse midwifery can do anything and help moms in any way they'd like to. There's so many different scenarios and so many different things that they can do to help the mom out. Hello, I'm here to talk about registered nursing. Registered nursing purpose is our purpose is to care for our patients, to monitor them, to give them their medication, any treatment they might need, to to explain, to give to give information back to the provider, to update the patient record, educate the patient and the patient family on the disease and their treatments. And our responsibilities are we have quite we have a lot of responsibilities and here are a few. Start IVs, perform treatments, perform procedures and special tests, document treatments, and also to communicate with the patient's family and the patient also about their condition. These are some communication skills that we'll need as a registered nurse educating your patient. You always have to make sure your patient knows 
for what you're doing, what they have, treatment that you're going to use on them, medicine that they're going to take, and also the family. They always need to be informed about their the patient condition, the patient care also. Developing personal relationships with your patient, that's very important in a registered nursing field because you need to gain your patient trust. You need to gain. And also, you don't want to, no one wants somebody to be working on them and to be extra rude, not talking to them. Sometimes they have no family. Sometimes you're the only person that they see all day and might want to put a smile on that person's face for the day. It's important to have relationship with your patients and also verbal and nonverbal and written communication um as a registered nurse you will need these three communication skills because being a nurse you need to communicate that's a very very important part in a nursing field you need to communicate with patients with your family with your staff, with the doctors, the providers, communication is a key. You need to, without communication, nothing goes right. So communication is a very big thing in the nursing field, any nursing field actually, but it's very important to register in nursing. Okay, scenario one. We must be able to communicate with the patient and the patient family. As you can see in the picture, you must be able to communicate with the patient family because they need to know what's going on with the patient. They need to know what's going on, and the patient also needs to know what's going on with them. It's important to communicate because the the patient family, is, they're stressed, they're worried, they're sad and all that, and you communicating with them helps, helps a lot more than you think. Scenario two. Being a registered nurse comes with a lot of important keys, but one important key is relationships. I cannot say it more. You need to have relationships with your patients. To gain a sense of trust and acceptance, you need to have relationships with them. You need to, because like I said before, that could put a smile on their face. It really can. Okay, case study. Okay, taking care of patients can be rewarding. It really can. It can make you feel really great and make you feel really good. But however, it could be emotionally draining. It, it really can. It can emotionally drain you, physically drain you. But at the end of the day, we have to remember a patient's health and well-being is one of the greatest feelings ever. To feel like you helped someone, you did something very good. Today is a very good feeling. And plus, sometimes in a nursing field, you could feel like you're doing customer service, but by the end of the day, you're helping someone life. You're helping someone survive each and every day. And that's the greatest feeling ever. Case study two. Sometimes you could do it with families that are very, um, how can I put this without saying something? wrong a family that's dealing with a lot of stress that doesn't know how to deal with it in the right way so they might be screaming at you they might be yelling at you but you as a nursing nurse need to know how to deal with it you need to learn that they're dealing with a lot because their their fam their family their son or daughter or cousin or auntie or uncle is sick uh, us as a nurse, we need to learn how to calm, stay calm and help those family members throughout everything. So today we will be doing a little trivia game um, after everything that we've learned from the following slides in the presentation. And we have six questions, so that should be fun. And I will ask a question and I'll give you guys like 10 or so seconds to answer each one or think of your answer. Okay, so it says the first question, which profession uses sound waves to create images of the human body? Okay, your time starts now. I feel like I should put like, music on like the. Okay, time's up. The answer is diagnostic medical sonography. Hope you got that one right. 
We're moving on to our second question. Is it true or false? By the way, there's three kind of like fill in the blank and three true or false. No. So true or false, diagnostic medical sonographers are solely responsible for communicating results to patients. I'm sorry, it's now. You see. <laughs> Okay, so that was false. Diagnostic medical sonographers are not solely responsible for communicating results to patients. So third question, it says, what is one of the responsibilities of a registered nurse? And this, there's various answers. So I'll give you again, 10 seconds, your time starts now. Okay, that was 10 seconds to think of one, um, but the answer or answers that were available were perform treatments, start IVs, run tests, and inform families. I hope you guys get that one right too. Okay, the fourth one is a true or false. True or false, registered nurses are advised to grow personal relationships with their patients. Time starts now. Okay, that one was true. Registered nurses are advised to grow personal relationships with their patients. Hope you got that one right too. Okay, fifth question. What is the name of the person the nurse midwifery follows right under? Time starts now. Okay, the primary midwife is who the nurse midwife follows right under. So it's the primary and then the nurse that follows right under. Okay, last question. It's another true or false. Nurse midwifery, its primary focus is about the baby during labor. True or false? You have 10 seconds. Okay, hope you got that answer. It was false. The mother is always primary. So, yeah. I hope you guys got a good score. I hope you answered some of those questions correctly. And I hope you enjoyed this little trivia game. All right. One thing we could take away from this is that communicating is an important key in any, any medical field any nursing field you need to have communication it needs to it's a must for you to be 100 percent sure that you will be successful in your field very important and one quote that really stuck out to us is this quote regardless of the approach health systems take the over reaching success factor in approving the health system the health system patient experience is communication Communication is key. It's key.